Welcome to the third segment of The Bible Says This, What Say You? This is Bishop Patrick L. Wood Sr. here. And the Bible says in Psalms 33, verse 4, the A clause for the word of the Lord is right. And I'm coming from uh, today, Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 13 that says, He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of answering stuff that we haven't heard going on today. There's a lot of answering stuff that we don't even uh, that we don't even agree with going on today. And there are many things that are being reported that people simply just haven't said. And the latest has to do with the what happened in Charlottesville, Virginia, not what's happening in Charlottesville, Virginia, as you hear it. You know, I've been watching the things happening in Charlottesville, uh, Virginia. Well, in Charlottesville, Virginia, there was a rally of some disgusting people, the Ku Klux Klans, the neo-Nazis, white supremacists, wicked folk, losers on the way out. They have no power, no real authority. Uh, I say that when people like that, when they get a legal permit to march, let them march. You go home. Go to the movies. Go to the mall, go out with friends, have a good time, pay them no attention. They have the right to say what they want to say. Only you can give them the right for you to hear them. I refuse to give them the right to even enter into my ear. I will not even put myself in their earshot because what they have to say is wicked, ungodly, wrong, backwards of the devil and the Four to six thousand of them, that's just not enough of them in a nation of 365 million to even get two minutes of my attention. But when the media blows them up and, and shows them on a constant loop over and over and over, it whips the country into a frenzy. And uh, you, everybody knows that our current president, President Donald John Trump, and the media uh, are at it, they're in it, they're battling. And uh, uh, so uh, when, it, when Charlottesville uh, first happened, uh, people were not satisfied with the president's response. I even wrote and, and posted myself that uh, when, when the, uh, when the uh, Islamic terrorists uh, attacked America, President Obama would never call them Islamic terrorists, extreme Islamic terrorists even to this day uh, Donald Trump on his first in his first response which I thought was a good response but it was not comprehensive he did not single out the white supremacist group and I criticized him for that uh, but I did say that it took him two days to get it right and the media is asking him today why did it take so long well in President Obama's whole eight years and even today he is still as far as I know not uh, pointed to the uh, uh, Islamic, radical Islamic terrorists, which anytime you kill somebody, you shout, uh, Allah is great, and you say you're doing it in the name of Allah. I think that kind of qualifies for being a radical Islamic terrorist. But he never did uh, condemn them. As a matter of fact, on the day when, when uh, 17 or so Coptic Egyptian Christians were beheaded, when the president spoke to a prayer breakfast, he rebuked Christians and told Christians to get off of their high horse. But back to this, back to this, you know, I, I get off into the weeds, but I trust my audience, whether you agree with me or not, to listen intelligently. President Trump said this, and I have a transcript of his speech here. He said, well, I think the driver of the car is a disgrace to himself, his family, and this country. You can call it terrorism. You can call it murder. You can call it whatever you want. I would call it as the fastest one to come up with a good verdict. There is a question. Is it murder? Is it terrorism? Then you get into legal semantics. The driver of the car is a murderer. These are the words of the president. What he did was a horrible Horrible, inexcusable thing. Now, this is not the com these are not the comments that he got in trouble for. These aren't comments that most of us even know he made because the media doesn't cover them. He did say, I've condemned neo-Nazis. I've condemned many different groups, but not all of those people were neo-Nazis. Believe me, not all of those people were white supremacists by any stretch 
Those people were also people there. They wanted to protest the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee. And what the president did was he did uh, say that there were good people on both sides. Now, there are those who say that what the president was saying was that there were good white supremacists. There were good Nazis. There were good uh, KKK. Now, it could be that's what he meant. But that wasn't my understanding of what he was saying. My understanding, and you know, I could be wrong, was that after condemning these white supremacist groups, he did, however, point to the, to the fact, as he believes them to be, that there were people who were there, not marching with the neo-Nazis, but who were there who actually felt that the monument to Lee should remain. And on the other side, there were people who were there who were not a part of Antifa, the George Soros funded group of radicals who are actually, who actually, who actually protest violently against speech that they don't agree with. If you don't agree with them, they will shut you down. Ask Berkeley, California. Ask other areas where they've gone. At least when the Klan march in, in a city, when they leave the city, you don't have to repair the windows and, uh, uh, and, and you, you got to uh, put the fire out. Uh, if, if no one opposes them. Uh, the Antifa, uh, I mean, they're trying to intimidate and silence speech that they disagree with. So, but, but I thought that the president was saying that there were people on the side, in terms of sides, ideology, who agreed with Antifa that the Robert E. Lee statue should come down and that there were people who agreed with the white supremacists that they would, that the statue of Robert E. Lee remain, but neither group of people, neither were a part, a part of these fringe group, the alt-right and Antifa, which represents the alt left. Now, that was my understanding. I could be wrong. President uh, uh, Donald Trump may have been calling members of the white supremacists good people on the other side. But if you read his speech in context, it doesn't read like that contextually. Now, I, I mind you, he's not the, his speaking style, he's not a polished trained politician and he doesn't come across like a polished trained uh, politician and maybe I'm just you know just dumb and I don't know anything but what I thought that the president was saying was that you got these two you got you got these two groups and uh, and Antifa is wrong white supremacy is wrong it is evil which one of them are the most wrong I tell you what I don't know because let me tell you as wicked as white supremacy is and it says it's wicked to the core it's also wickedness and it's a threat to our nation when there's a group that will that bully and intimidate people they, they wouldn't let ann coulter and other other conservative speakers who went to college campuses comp campuses they were invited to speak and they are not invited to speak white supremacy as a matter of fact many of those conservative speakers agree with you my audience they agree that marriage should be a union between a man and a woman they agree that uh, a man can't turn himself into a woman that a man, because he cuts off his, his uh, phys physical male anatomy, he doesn't all of a sudden become a girl. Well, uh, uh, many people in Antifa, when they hear that people who have these views are speaking on college campuses, they violently protest. So they're no, they, 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 this is a wicked group. And churches, I tell you what, in the years to come, let's see who we have the most uh, problems with. Uh, the, the, the KKK, their wicked selves, or Antifa. Time will tell. But both groups were there, but there were people also there. And I've talked to some people who've talked to people who were there who were not on either 
side. And those were the people that I thought that the president was referencing. I could be wrong, but that's, that's, and, 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 uh, and, but that's what I thought. Now, Based on his comments, we've had different people to weigh in and say that they couldn't, they wouldn't support the president. Kevin Durant, they honored him the other day on Kevin Durant Day. Awesome guy, awesome basketball player, fine young man. I'm personally proud of Kevin Durant. But Kevin Durant said that he would not visit the White House if he were invited. Now, the invitation hadn't been given, but he said, I don't respect uh, who's in office right now, and he said that he would turn down uh, the invitation if it's given, and that uh, uh, he said, I don't agree with uh, what he agrees with, so my voice is going to be heard, and Durant said that he wouldn't go. Now, if you base your position on what you agree with, and I, at last I checked, I, I think, uh, I, I, and I could be wrong, that Kevin Durant is, is a Christian. So if but, but that, that's my understanding, and I, I, I believe that he is awesome basketball player, cool guy. You know, I, I, I like him. I like his disposition. But if you, Mr. Durant, make it on what you agree with or doesn't agree with, then my question becomes, how do you play for the Warriors? Um, the Golden State Warriors, uh, their chief operating officer, Rick Welts, W-E-L-T-S, yeah, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, is a homosexual. I think he's married to a man, but he's open homosexual. He gave a impassioned, well-received speech at the owners' meeting last week in Las Vegas, effectively explaining uh, the wider impact of HB2 and how many people uh, it might affect around uh, the NBA community, especially uh, in an all-star weekend scenario. In other words, it was the Golden State Warriors who were the leading NBA team arguing to have the, the All-Star game moved from the Queen City, Charlotte, North Carolina, because in the state of North Carolina, we believe that a man should use the men's room and that a woman should use the women's room. Kevin, I, I, I've seen you celebrate with your lovely mother, super lady, Man, when you called her uh, the most valuable MVP, the most valuable player, brother, listen, I teared up with you. But I don't believe, Kevin, for one minute you would feel good about your mother being in the ladies' room and some guy walked in there with that precious lady. I think that that would bring out the worst in Kevin Durant. I don't think that you would agree with the Warriors on this. I really do not. I really do not. I thank God for Paul George. Paul George says, I'm a huge, I'm huge on keeping your word. I'm not necessarily saying it's bad for the NBA to move. Charlotte is a growing city, and the Hornets have have the Hornets have picked that program up. It's a shame. It's possible uh, that we'd take that away from them. He was arguing for leaving the, the game in place. So uh, uh, the, uh, the Warriors, and, and not to mention in my uh, fleeting few minutes, what the Warriors did for the head coach, uh, Jackson, Mark Jackson, a black man who is a Christian. Mark was too Christian to remain the head coach, uh, Kevin Durant, of the Warriors. Dale, uh, 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 brother uh, uh, Curry, and uh, all you guys, and he's a brother. He says this, quote, I will say this. Mark Jackson, Mark Jackson said the day of the news, you know, the day that, uh, uh, that Jason Collins came out. He says, we live in a country that allows you to be whatever you want to be. I am a Christian. I serve a God that gives you a free will to be who you want to be. As a Christian man, I, I have beliefs of what's right and what's wrong. That being said, I know Jason Collins, I know his family, and I am praying for them at this time. None of this uh, 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 was, was uh, darling, Donald sterling -esque, but it was probably not the image the Warriors wanted to project. And so the Warriors got rid of Mark Jackson because Mark did not go along with homosexuality. Now, I wonder, Kevin Durant, do you agree with that? Do you agree that Mark was too Christian to coach for the Warriors? So they fired him 
and he had a winning record. He's an awesome coach. I got some more things to say. The Bible says this. What say you? I'm fired up.